So uh, welcome to another episode of the Pepper Soup Talk Show, where we bring to the table movers and shakers in the African diaspora. So we are stationed here in Germantown, Philadelphia, and we have the pleasure of being at the first Black-owned uh, single artist uh, fine arts studio photography, photography gallery yeah. in the U.S. and the world that I know that that he knows of yeah. that he knows of. <laughs> so we, all, we, we, all, we, we always preface it not not from a place of uh, not being sure, but we always mm. give credence to the idea that there's no end of unique thought. There's mm. there's no individual thing. I didn't come up with this by myself. So. Right, right, right. There, there may be somebody in Cameroon right now. Yeah, <laughs> they got their own joint. And, right. You know, I'm just catching up. So. Right. Well, well, I'm mean, I can already tell that this is going to be uh, very thoughtful and uh, you know, interview filled with a lot of wisdom. Um, this man has been all across the world, and you know, I've had a pleasure of being being here. You know, a couple of times, and I've seen all his amazing artwork. And so, you know, we were excited to hear about his story. Um, we, you know, we definitely want to start from the beginning, but we're with the owner himself, yes. Stephen Taylor. Yes. And uh, this is Ubuntu Fine Arts. And so, um, you know, I'm going to let you introduce yourself, but, you know, I just want to welcome you to Pepper Soup Talk. Uh, I, appreci I appreciate the pepper. <laughs> and, uh, I appreciate the pepper. Thank y'all for having me. And um, thank you for reaching out to me for sure. And, yeah. and for coming to Absorb the Gallery. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a chance to. So, uh, we, we are always happy when people will come in and talk about it. Cool, cool. So we want to start from the beginning. So uh, <laughs> let's take it way back. Like, you know, we were talking before uh, while we were setting up and, you know, you're telling us about um, your career and uh, and you've had you've had a number of careers. Correct. Actually, and and, and from, right, you're originally from Philadelphia. Yep, born and raised in Germantown. Born and raised in Germantown, which is, which is where we're at right now. Cool. So this is like, in a lot of ways, kind of coming full circle. Absolutely. What would you say? It's very, very intentional. So, so can you talk? Oh, wow, very intentional. Very intentional. So, so can you talk a little bit about that? Can you talk about growing up in Germantown and, and what it was like coming up in Philly? Because Germantown, and I imagine this part of Germantown too, looks a lot different than it was when you were when you were growing up. So it's because it's, it's two ways that I look at it. So it's my grandma used to live around the corner on Lena Street. My, okay. My, my grandma passed away when I was seven. So the my older brothers tell the story, tell the story differently, but they would go to my grandma's house and then uh, come on Germantown Avenue and go to the thrift stores, go shopping and do all the stuff, Germantown Avenue. Yeah. In the early 80s, late 80s, mid 80s, early 90s was a, is a commercial hub for business. So mm. um, we go on the Ave to buy all our shoes when I was mm. a kid, right? So the Ave, if you consider Shelton Avenue, it was okay. a bunch of shoe stores. It was more, it was a Models on Shelton Avenue. Okay. You know, it was a commercial hub yeah. in this space. Um, I'm technically from East Germantown. Okay. So uh, we'll say, not be disparaging, but almost like the other side of the tracks yeah. from West Germantown. West Germantown has historic Germantown, but it also borders Mount Airy in a certain kind of way. There are different kinds of houses. Um, the people who assume the space differently than, you know, East Germantown is, will be considered like the ghetto, you know, okay. so to speak. So, um, not that this ain't hood, but right, right, know, right, it's right. a little bit different. So, um, I have a tale of two Germantowns. Yeah. So, you know, historic Germantown or, uh, West Germantown or Shelton Avenue where you're coming by all, yeah. your, all your swag as yeah, a young yeah. boy. Um, and where I'm from, some of the top side, um, that I kind of, I say, I, I put it into the context that it gave me all the tools that I needed to to, to really, really, really succeed. Mm. And I was fortunate to be born to my mother. Mm. Yeah, you know, I, I like to uh, talk about Philly and, uh, and we all do, you know, Toby, myself, uh, my partner, Seku, we like to talk about Philly because it's a city that has so much character. And, you know, every part- Character of, or characters? Characters. <laughs> <laughs> but every part of the city is just, is, is very different, right. you know, especially being here versus, you know, in North Philly versus South Philly, like everywhere looks so different. And I think that's something that's very special about the city. And, um, but, but yeah, you know, being, being in, in here, um, you know, talk about a commercial corridor and, and, and being raised in these areas. Uh, can you talk a little about, you know, your childhood and, um, you know, just kind of like how you you made your way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I was, uh, you know, quintessential um, young black boy story. Yeah. Know, 
think parent house, you know, my mom did what she could, how she could. Uh, I credit all of my success, my ability to um, own a house that is that we've and just been in our family 50 years to my mother. Wow. Um, like she was a pillar of the community, even though she didn't understand it in a certain way. Like she's not a hood person. She's yeah. very well read. I grew up in the libraries, mm. you know, your libraries. So uh, most of my childhood was spent at West Oak Lane Library. Okay. And then uh, into my middle school and high school years, she moved to Coleman. Uh, regional library so very well read um you know in my house it was just a little bit different it's yeah. it's ain't not aren't mm. i mean it's not it's not ain't it's, it's aren't. aren't right um so this is how my friends assume yeah. my house right a little bit differently than i may assume their houses mm-hmm. so um i i would i kind of like to put it in the context of i lived in the hood but my house was the suburbs mm. because my mom was the way that she was yeah, she is. Yeah. Um, which was now able to give me a way. I wasn't easy or anything like that. I'm a, right. I'm a product of where I am. Right. The struggles of, of, uh, I won't call us poverty stricken, but we was poor. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't know we was poor until later. But, right. Um, the struggles of like a young black boy really trying to, but I had this kind of thing in myself where I, I knew I was special. Yeah. I didn't know how I was going to be special, but I said, mm. I'm, um, I feel special. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that means, but yeah. I feel special. Yeah. I thought it was athletics. Yeah. You know, um, athletics took me to college. Yeah. What's, so, what sport? Football. You know, okay. You know, not soccer, but football. American, <laughs> American football. Um, so, you know, in my mind, I was going to the, I was going to somebody's league. It didn't have yeah. to be the NFL, but I, Arena League. Yeah. Whoever wants to decide, whoever I can go to play for yeah. after college, I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. But, um, I had a really, really, really good senior season. And then um, I played with an injury the whole year and I had surgery at the end of the season and I couldn't move. Mm. Um, I'm, I predicate my entire game on speed. Yeah. I've been the fastest person that I've been around most of my life. I can't move no more. Mm-hmm. Them two teams that was looking at me, those arena league teams immediately withdrew. Wow. Um, I'm thinking about what I'm about to do. I'm six, four months to graduation. Yeah. Like legit for what the wow I to do. I'm, I thought I was going to play football. Yeah. So uh, my girlfriend at the time, she applied for this internship at Goldman Sachs. Yeah. I wrote her application. She got yeah. it. I said, I'm smart. <laughs> I said, oh shit. <laughs> I just got a job at Goldman Sachs. Yeah. I did. Because she didn't write for any of it. I wrote yeah. the entire thing. <laughs> and she got it. Wow. I got a job yeah. at Goldman Sachs. So. Yeah. Once I kind of understood that a certain kind of way, um, I was on my way to be a New York State trooper. Yeah. My, my degree is in criminal justice. I said, chalk, I said, I'm not doing that. Mm. I'm coming back to Philly. I went to school in Jersey City, St. Peter's Peacocks. We just, uh, okay. uh, the first team in uh, NCAA history to make the mm. eight. So are we buzzing Shout right now. Them, Shout out to the Peacocks. Shout yeah. Um, so I come home at the college and I don't know what I'm going to do or how I'm going to do it. Yeah, I got this degree in criminal justice. I uh, moved to DC right. to um, uh, be a youth correction officer for the DC government. Okay, and I will say that that is when the trajectory of my life was opened up exponentially to this idea of more than just Philadelphia, mm. you know, more than just what I'm accustomed to between entrepreneurship, and, yeah, you know, stuff like that. Within eleven months. I meet this girl at McDonald's at the Howard McDonald's in DC yeah. and her mom wound up getting me, her mom wound up getting me down with the consultant firm, Booz Allen Hamilton. All of my professional career was spent with them wow. to be able to uh, assimilate and, um, uh, network with affluent. Yeah. People got paper. Yeah. <laughs> like they not, they not tripping. They not tripping about nothing. Yeah. Um, uh, Park Nightclub, 14th and Park, if you're familiar with DC. DC, yeah. 10 years ago, 15 yeah. years ago. You know, this Park. is a hub for, for, for the African diaspora to network. Right. From, at a corporate level. Though. Right. Like, it's not like house party type joint. Mm-hmm. There's people in there that, that, yeah, like, yeah, you know. Right. Yeah. Now I'm working with this consultant firm that I'm making this kind of money. And, and I feel like that's, that's big in DC. Like these people in DC love to talk about, you know, 
it goes straight to what? Like, what do you do? What do you do? How can we work together? How can right, I, how can, right. how can I capitalize off of that. you? Like, it goes straight to that. Yeah. Philadelphia is a little bit different. Yeah. So, like, you know, my my professional network, mm. a certain kind of professional network, is still all in DC. Yeah. All of the entrepreneurs are in Philly. We mm. hustlers. Right. They, we, they they got their businesses. You know, um, I put it like this: Philadelphia has a lot of Muslims. Mm. Muslims, by and large, operate outside of everything. Yeah. They're not tripping. Mm. They own businesses. Right. They're doing anything. They're not, they're not asking nobody even nothing and they're not tripping about nothing. Mm. When it comes around to the political cycle and every, you, you don't see the Islamic population, which you know is heavy in Philadelphia. Right. Part of that process at all. Uh, they're not tripping. Mm. If they're not tripping, then what am I? Mm. I'm, I'm rolling how they roll. Right. However they roll and I'm rolling, you mm. know? Um, so I've been able to network, you know, between a lot of different people within the space of yeah. Philadelphia to be able to utilize my corporate understanding, the, my uh, passion for technology, my passion for learning, my passion for skills, yeah. um, mm -hmm. with this undergirding spirit of hustle that I already had. Right. You know, I'm, I'm from here, this is what, this right. is, this is what we do. Like, right. like we grind, I was the weed man in college. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I've been hustling for a long time, so. Yeah. You know, it's just different kinds of transitions while I can allure you, like bring you in. I'm an engineer. All right. Man, well, well Buddha Hamilton, that's a reputable company. Right. It rings bells and everything else. Yeah. But I'm talking about Ubuntu. Like mm -hmm. we, we bring it back to how I'm able to see you as me. Yeah. You know, but everything is you as me, you right. as me, you as me. So ideally, when you're making decisions, yeah. you got a little bit of more empathy on the hood. Mm -hmm. We need resources. We need stuff. Right. You know, um, I open my high end gallery here because I'm from here. Yeah. Ain't nobody else come here. Right. You know, uh, Uncle Bobby's is there because Mark's from here. Right. Right. If the larger entities don't see value, mm. why are they coming? Mm. Unless there's a beacon. And hopefully, Umbuja can be that beacon. Be that light to, mm -hmm. wow. to attract people. Wow. So, you know, you talk about intention and how, you know, starting this gallery here, how that was intentional. Especially with it being in Germantown, can we can we go back to when you first pick up that camera? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. And, and and what what sparked that? And and how did you go down that tra trajectory? So often, um, I, I I try to make very uh, you go back to this word intentional, not to reference my photography with my corporate game mm. because they're two different things. The only the way I found photography was by quitting my corporate gig. I quit the corporate gig. Yeah. Um, I was finishing a project, renovating my house, and I was bored. And yeah. by me being bored, um, I picked up on something that I was doing before the renovation started, which was this idea of uh, my Instagram name was I Am Food Frenzy. Okay. And with my corporate money, I was able to go to really nice restaurants and eat out all the time. Yeah. So imagine in 2014, everybody take pictures of their foods now. It's, it's, it's on reels and everything else. This is close to 10 years ago, eight years ago. Yeah. It wasn't that prevalent, right? So it wasn't everybody taking pictures of their food, but mm. I was taking pictures of my food. Yeah. yeah. My demographic, my audience is people that's not going to these restaurants that I'm going to. Right. Who's Allen is paying for for free for me. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not, it's not like I got paper or I'm, yeah. or I'm fr frauding or yeah. anything else, but. Uh, composition, you know, I'm learning these things. I'm understanding symmetry and all this kind yeah. of stuff within taking pictures of these dishes that I'm, that I'm about to eat mm. personally. Right. So, um, I get these GoPros and yeah. I'm going to walk around the city and get people's food stories in 2014, which I don't know anybody who did anything else in any urban environment around the country. Yeah. But. In my mind, I introduced GoPro to the urban setting with the stuff that I was doing around I Am Food Frenzy, going around the city and capturing people's food stories from this first person perspective of my chest, mm. my camera on my wrist. Yeah. And um, I had one on the pole that I would control all with my phone. And was this while while you were at Booz? Uh, no. So yeah, you had left that I left, position. I left, I left the company. And then did you pick up the camera? You said you're bored at home like, you know, Monday. Well, I was bored home. after the project. Okay. So I, I had really, um, I were the pro my renovation project was intense because I drew it all out to scale. Got you. Cause you, you start talking about how you were, you were home renovating your house. Yeah. Yeah. So I designed all of the renovations. Gotcha. And in, in Germantown. In Germantown. In Germantown. The house that we've owned for 50 years. Yeah. 
So, um, you know, my mom bought their house for $8,000 in like the early 70s, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. And she doesn't like to say it this way, but I claim it to fame it every day that I can. We were the first black family on the 5600 block of Chihuahua, mm. you know, to wow. own a house. Yeah. Now, can you tell me about what your thought process was after, so you, you left the corporate job, you know, okay, this not, I don't want to continue to, to do this at this time. And then, you know, you were at home, you were renovating, re- renovating your house. What was, what were you thinking around that time? Like, was it, let's see, let's see what happens next. And then you were kind of led in this direction of with the photography and, and what you ended up doing, um, with the, with the food brand that you built or like what, what was the, what was your thought process during all of that? You know what I mean? Like, because, because you, you know, you're home, you're renovating this house. Like what, what, what were you? So there was a, there, there was, there was, there was process before that. Okay. Um, uh, Candidly, I was going to grow wheat. Like I built my house to grow wheat. Gotcha. 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 Um, I'm a, I'm a grow these pounds. (laughs) <laughs> based this on man, this, this pepper soup topic. Yeah, we can talk. Yeah. We can talk. About. I mean, we just talking we talk flowers. About, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just, just flowers. <laughs> so, um, you know, within really kind of saying, all right, I'm a, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. And equating certain kinds of funds, I can build it into my renovation. Mm. So that way, I have all of similar to the gallery, like very similar to the gallery to the right. lights and stuff like that. I can build all of my. Um, ventilation. Yeah. I can build my rooms. I can build everything to the specs. I can have uh, a separate electric box so yeah. that the, the breakers are separate for my grow room that are, yeah. that are for the rest of the house. Right. I know it's all coming off the same bill. So, you know, um, really, really, really understanding. When I tell you, I built my house of scale yeah. on uh, one of those um, uh, grid books, one of those graphic books, yeah. you know, where a block equals a foot. Mm. Built it to scale, legit. My basement and the first and in the, the first level, the basement was. And, and you were you were single handedly doing all of this. I had some contractors. You know, okay, okay, gotcha. Right. I can't build shit. Can't build it, but I can draw. I can draw the blueprints. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, like like I, yeah. I can legit draw the, draw the blueprints. Yeah. Um, I I I wound up finding, you know, contractors hard to find though. Like a really a good, good contractor, contractor right? Well, I, 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 can see all I found that. somebody. I found this Man. guy. Shout out to my guy Sam and Lil Sam and yeah. Big Sam. It was a father son son yeah. trio that built. And you found a good contractor. You hang, you hang on tight. They yes. hooked me up. Yeah, Man, they hooked. They hooked me up. Yeah, they hooked me up. Mm. And I tell you, so you know, working with them, being able to build this stuff out, and then mind you, I'm lying for 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 the whole time that I'm building this out. I'm telling people I'm building server rooms. <laughs> so I'm telling people, I said I'm building these server. I'm now I'm, I'm an engineer. Don't nobody know. How, right. how does anybody know? I said I'm right. building. I'm building in the, in the basement server racks. And for these server racks, we need they need to be cooled a certain kind yeah. of way. So I need extra power for AC. Mm. Who who going to tell me that I'm growing weed? Right. Don't nobody know. Right. So you know, um, I wound up did I did it well. Yeah. Like I really did yeah. it well. I just couldn't. I couldn't sell. It, mm. um, it wasn't. I'm too far gone from that world yeah. to be able to uh, uh, allow it to replace six figures. Mm. <laughs> you know, so yeah. um, I call myself the luckiest man in the world. Blue Allen Hamilton called me back. Yeah, he hit me up. Yeah. On, matter of fact, Gary hit me up on Facebook. He yeah. said, "We got we got this position for you if you want to. <laughs> if you want to, it's open to you." You know, he's and, and at this point, I've, I'm traveling. You know, yeah. I'm doing stuff. Um, I'm documenting people. My GoPro stuff is now taking off. Um, yeah. um, um, uh, how do you say? Building this content creation, we'll call it entity between my two companies. Yeah. Now, uh, Steven Taylor Photography, which has been around for seven years now, and Oboy from Fine Art, which has been around for less than a year. Yeah. Um, building these businesses around, I now am able to articulate the edge exactly what it is. Yeah. The archival of the stories that I'm able to absorb by my natural being mm. i'm not intentionally going anywhere for anything most yeah. of my early travels was to go and document other people yeah once i'm done documenting you get out of my way let me get my shot right <laughs> and getting out of my way let me get my shot is introspection that's our um our uh piece from uh barbados yeah um which is an animal flower cave which at the time i think it was like 2016 2017 was made popular because rihanna shot a video in there, mm. right so my homeboys wanted to go they all live in and gramming and everything else yeah y'all done get out of my way 
<laughs> Let me get my shot. But yeah. I got them already, you know. Right, so I, right. I, I'm a document, a capture, a, 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 a call it still time, you know, time to, Yeah, you know, um, as a way to archive for later. So these are artifacts that we look at in the gallery. Yeah. You know, they're meant so that when I'm gone, they're here, mm. and you can still feel the exuberance at the same color rendition of these young boys jumping off into the jetty, mm. you know, even though I'm, you know, 20 years dead, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, um, so thinking about things with, you know, really, really that much intention, yeah. um, you know, so after I was I kind of figured out that like, all right, I'm building these skills, 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 skills. I can grow this. I can do this. I can build this, blah, 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 blah. Got all these skills. Yeah. They call me to go back to work. Seamless. Bang. Mm -hmm. So now I'm back in it, doing the thing, doing the thing, doing the thing. They send me to a tech conference in Vegas. Okay. The tech conference in Vegas, because I don't gamble. But before this tech conference, so now, because mm -hmm. when you left that, when you left the job the first time, was it that you no longer wanted to work corporate? And you went back like, like well, I just didn't want to manage people. Gotcha. They promoted, they were promoting me. They were giving me more. They were giving me more money and say, now you got managed people. And I'm like, I, work too, right? I really don't want that responsibility. I don't yeah. want the responsibility. Why yeah. can't you just promote? If I'm promotable, yeah. why do you then have to attach that with it? You're promoting right. me because I'm good. Yeah. I'm not managing nobody right now. Yeah. I don't want to manage. Yeah. I have no desire to write assessments, mm. to manage people, to do any of the things that now say, oh, I, I'm this and I'm a manager and I make this amount of money and yeah. I don't care about that. Yeah. It has, it's of ill consequence right. to me when now I know that my managers hate their jobs. Mm. I'm watching, like you're talking to me, <laughs> telling me how much you dislike managing people. <laughs> like I don't, I'm not going to sign up to say, hey, let me do that too. Right. So, you know, this idea of a corporate ladder, it wasn't the corporate ladder for me. I knew I was the commodity. Right. They need me yeah. more than I need them because I can take these skills to Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, SAIC, whatever government consultant firm, i.e. government subsidy, core holding corporation to the tunes of billions of dollars that right. there is. They all need the skills. It's the right. same things. It's, just, it's the same skills. It's the same software. Right. It's the same reporting stuff. It's the same thing. So mm. if it's all the same stuff, I don't owe Booz Allen. Yeah. I'm grateful, extremely grateful to them and right. the people there for being able to, you know, freely give me their intellectual capital that I didn't go to school and pay for. Mm. Right. But at the same time, once I got the capital, then, you know, it's mine. Right. I, own it. I right. own that. It's now it's my skill. Right. And my skill that I'm able to give to you guys is the understanding of the technical aspects, mm. but also being able to, uh, function in the capacity of customer service that a lot of you can't do don't mm. do don't have the facility to do however you break it down yeah y'all not as good at it as me which is why they coveted me you right. know so probably right now go back and right. work for them <laughs> right this second if, yeah. I, if i if i if, if, if i wanted, wanted to something. but they gave me the confidence to be able to believe in myself mm. to say that you know um what are you asking me to do? Yeah. I can do that. Right. That's not a problem. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not a big thing. So, right. You know, really under my understanding myself with the skills, yeah. you know, I, I got them. If once I acquire them, they, they really are mine. Mm. And I do myself a disservice by saying, you know what? I owe boots on my hands and everything. I'm can, never leaving. I'm going to stay here forever. Can, can, can you talk about some of the skills that, that you gained while you were there? Like, like specifically, like what, what were some of the, the skills that, that were transferable from there that you've kind of been able to take with you, you know, you know. Uh, the biggest troubleshooting, yeah. troubleshooting, okay, like problem solving, yeah, uh, uh, taking a clear mind, stepping back from stepping stepping back from an issue. So, okay, you know, imagine the application is broken, something technical is broken. We have to fish through um, lines of code and log files to find what the problem is. Yeah, the issue is you need to turn, you need to turn something on and off. Mm. But you just spent three hours looking through log calls. Mm. You should have turned it off on and off from rip. Yeah. You know, but you can't do that during business hours. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, customers want the machine. They don't, I mean, we want the application. They don't know it's broke. Mm. They're still moving around, moving around it, doing things in it and things like that. I know it's broke. Yeah. You know, some other people know it's broke. So, um, 
uh, these skills now I can transfer into, well, what is the distance from the wall that they're likely to be based on size? Mm. That's troubleshooting. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's, you know, what's my, what's my dilemma? Mm. What's wrong? Yeah. Well, what's wrong is I don't know what lights I need. I don't right. know. I don't know what to tell them what I need. Right. Okay. So based on dimension, so image, so distance from light to the wall based on how you want the, the beam to spread is based on the size of the image. So you're not going to light a uh, eight by 10, the same way you're going to light a 40 by 60. Mm. They're not the same thing. So, so, so those problem solving skills, like, like really. Yeah, you know, absolutely. That, Google is as good as the question you ask it, ask it. Right. Right. So if you can't ask Google a good question, then what good is it? Right. The, the, the answer, answer you get yeah. is always good. Yeah. The question you ask. Yeah. Exactly. Look, I know Toby got some, some, uh, he'll be brewing. <laughs> yeah. He'll be brewing. <laughs> I can see the gears turning. Yeah, you talked about a lot. There's a lot to unpack right there. Um, and it's just always a gradual uh, process to be where you want to be in life, just, mm -hmm. just in general. Um, and I kind of find it impressive, even for your first project, you said you designed your own or model your own house. Mm -hmm. And you, you did that for the studio also. Mm -hmm. uh, so the lights and the fixtures and stuff right, like right, that. Right, right. I told them what I needed. Okay. So I was able to... What they asked me, they said, um, so first is electricians. Okay, go go get your track lights. What you talking about? What track lights? Mm. Which ones? Whichever ones you want. Oh, how did that work? Yeah. I don't know how that works. Or there's lighting companies. Yeah. Lighting companies from 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 uh, uh, scale to installation. Yeah. They do it to controls, to tracks, to options, to 3D renderings, to I'm gonna be on the Zoom call with you mapping all this whole thing out. Yeah. Another electrician didn't give me that opportunity. Mm. They didn't offer that to me. I didn't know it existed. Right. And I knew I didn't know, I didn't know what was in the other galleries. Yeah. And that's where I'm building my research from, mm. right? So I don't know what to tell them to go get because the salesperson that I'm asking can't tell me what that is. Yeah. They don't know. The lighting company installed that. Yeah. So the lighting company that I wound up going with installs lighting for retail stores, stores, right. schools and everything else. So, mm. um, you know, I pay for it. Right. But at the same time, I have complete control of every track in here. Right. And, and we, we want to get into. We definitely want to get into how this actual establishment came together, like, like the physical establishment. Mm -hmm. But before we get there, I want to hear about some of uh, some of these places that you, you've been, because, you know, you walk in here and you see paintings, you know, these pictures from from all over uh, pictures from all over uh, the world. Right, right, right. So can, can you talk a little bit about about that, like where your travels took you, how you ended up in these places you talk about Kenya and. And South Africa, South Africa, yeah, yeah, yeah. And all over the world. Um, I mean, because 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 our conversation so far, we've spoken about uh, the food brand you're building, right. and uh, how you know. But, but I'm seeing pictures here from Kenya, and so, so right, right, right. You know, we want right. we want to hear this. We want to hear the story. I Man, mean, so I um, a lot of twists and turns. I said, just tie that into, um, is this also? Would you consider what you're doing now your purpose? And just mm -hmm. what you've been in through in life, and how did this tie back into where you are today? So, we'll start with purpose. Okay. Mm -hmm. Purpose is daily. Purpose is in ten years. I don't know what I'll be in ten years. I don't know what my how I'll rationalize stuff then. Mm -hmm. Right here, right now, my purpose is to spread the pedagogy of Ubuntu, to help people through my art see themselves in one another, right? So I can see myself in you, I yeah. see myself in you. Um, I don't got to agree, but I can have empathy. Yeah. Empathy does not require sympathy. Yeah. I'm moving about my day the way I'm doing it, and you moving about yours the way that you do, right? Um, traveling itself was never something that I had any intention on doing. Yeah. Um, one of my homeboys introduced me to it, my cousin worked for the airlines. I fly on his on his registered guest pass. Yeah, you know, so I fly for very very cheap and free, not free well free domestically, very cheap internationally. 
um, it was really documenting other people. So when my homeboy said, yo, we're going to Rome, you want to go? I don't got a passport. Mm. Okay, passport. This is all after 30, all after I quit the corporate gig. I had yeah. never been nowhere. I didn't have no desire. I'm a, if you know anything about Philly people, we don't want to go nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> right? We don't want to go nowhere. We're like, no, I'm cool. I'm cool at home. You know what I'm saying? Like, you might take a random trip to Miami here. Right. Yeah, but we ain't trying to go nowhere. And, you know, that's to our detriment sometimes. Yeah. Like, um, I'm glad that I was able to, you know, frequent and network with people that was ready to roll. Right. Because my first trip to Rome, I, I'll never forget. Mm. My homeboy, like this, this dude was selling, African dude was selling something, like yeah. um, in Rome on the street. And I'm like, no, man, we're going to look out for him. That's only $45. Bro. Yeah. I'm trying to buy that shit, man. It's cool. We're going to look out. So I buy it for forty. I buy it at the first price. Was it, did you find it was a big a black African community in, in Rome? Oh no, only people selling shit. Mm. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Well, at least what, from yeah. what I saw, the couple of days I was, it was only people selling things. Yeah. Right? Um. So I bought this thing for forty five dollars, and my man was like, "That ain't how you do it. Mm. Mm. Don't. It's, an, it's gonna be another boy down the street. It's gonna be another boy down the street. Literally wow. two seconds later, the guy who sold it to you told the you other know. homeboy yeah. of the guy who sold it to me was selling the same thing, starting at fifteen dollars cheaper. <laughs> starting at fifteen dollars cheaper, so he hit me with thirty. Right. The other dude started at sixty. I got him down to forty-five. I thought I got a deal. The yeah. other dude starting at thirty. Yeah. Nobody asked you for nothing, yeah. right? You think with your arrogance that you can give somebody uh, sympathy, charity, mm. when they are selling to you, yeah. smelling that Wazungu American all over you. Yeah. Smell it like, oh, it's yes. All, it's all green in he think, he <laughs> think he, he think he got the money. Yes, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take all of yeah. it. Now, understanding that in African culture, everything's negotiation. Mm. Everything's negotiation. You negotiate with the border patrol people in the yeah. in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. You, when you don't understand yeah. those things, then you think you pay. In Philly, you pay like I pay like I weigh. It yeah. ain't no problem. Yeah. You know, you get into the clubs that you're not supposed to pay hundred dollars to get into, but I pay like I weigh. You gonna give them three hundred dollars? Doesn't make any sense. Mm. Pride, yeah. arrogance, all of these yeah. kinds of things. So, um, once I got down with. My homeboy, Neo, Rome was the first country that I visited. Okay. Then I went to Mexico. Well, those are the first international countries that I visited. San Francisco was the first place that I went to once I got my passport because I had to have a place to go to to get the passport. Mm. So San because I got a, a rushed passport, emergency passport. So yeah. I went to San Francisco by myself. And to this day, it's probably still like one of the best trips because I was able to take it by myself. Yeah. Wow. So I've heard San Francisco, I've heard so, so San Francisco, Rome to to, to Rome to you say, you say Mexico. Mexico. So um I've seen almost all of the seven wonders. Almost uh, I haven't been to Egypt. So yeah. I've, I've seen Chichen Itza, I've seen the Colosseum. Yeah. Um a couple other ones that I've seen. Uh, I'm about half of them, almost all. I think about half of them. And and these pictures that you that you have here, and I, and I wish people who are tuned in. You know, thank you for tuning in to Pepper Soup Talk over here with Stephen Taylor. Uh, and I wish you could see these pictures. <laughs> well, you but, can see them online, UbuntuFA.com, U-B-U-N-T-U-F-A.com. Because these, these pictures, I mean, I mean, it's just like you get sucked into them. And, and so what I'm wondering right now is how do you need to develop that, that like skill set to where, you know, you're traveling to the different places and, 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 and getting your shots. But I mean, these aren't regular pictures. Right. Two different forms of process, two different forms of approach. Okay. Right? There is the capturing of the moment. Yeah. And then there's a processing of the photo. Mm. Of the file, right. Um, I was alluding to this a little bit before where I went to Vegas and for a tech conference and I was able to come across a photographer yeah. named Peter Lick, right? Yeah. So Peter Lick is a world renowned photographer. Um, who of the, and I make sure I, I always kind of make sure I get this right is, uh, of the 10 plus million dollars images that have sold yeah. in the primary market before reaching the secondary market, he has like six of them. Right? So at least six images that he sold mm. 
she has fetched a million dollars. She has yeah. images from Smithsonian, all this other kind of stuff. So when I went to his gallery in Vegas, when I assumed it, I'm blown away, awestruck. I'm like, how does this even work? Yeah. There was a picture of these uh, uh, immaculate white horses in France. Mm. And then it was this lavender field. And then there was this um, uh, Central Park shot. And then it was this, you go into this room and they dim the lights and it looks like the, the, the sun is setting. It was amazing. Yeah. But most of them were printed in uh, a form or medium called acrylics or okay. face mounted acrylics. Yeah. Um, so once I saw that, the first day that I was at the conference, I don't gamble. Yeah. So Vegas isn't that interesting to me, yeah. you know? So, um, it's but so much weed you can smoke and there's but so much food that you can eat. Yeah. Like, you can't do that all day, every day. So I, I wound up spending hours in his gallery. Wow. And by the time I leave, I, I had already planned my daughter and her mom were meeting me in Vegas and we we're going to drive to Horseshoe Bend and yeah. Little Canyon and the Grand Canyon, then fly home from Phoenix. So okay. I'm just going to make it a whole trip since I'm already out here. Yeah. Um, and by the time I leave, I'm like, that's a file. I got, mm. I got those files too. Yeah. You know, I may not know how to produce it like this yet, but I have, I have those files. Yeah. I got them too. So if I got them too, now I'm shooting everything for the idea that I can print it later. Mm. You know, once I go into the skills to print, cause I don't know how the hell you did that. Cause that looks crazy. That's, right. That is amazing. I don't know how to do that, but coming back to this confidence thing, like yeah. I can, I'll just learn that, but I already have the raw files. Right. If I'm shooting it raw, I have all the data, right. then I'll be able to do whatever I want to do with it later. Mm. I have good tools, right. you know, so I've always rocked Sony full frames, not always, but um, as I got into professional settings, I've rocked Sony full frames. Um, so proximity, so I'm able, I'm in these places, I have my camera, I don't stage much like, you know, this is again about absorbing space, yeah. you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm photographing what the space is giving me at the moment that I snap. Mm. Right? And this is based on a bunch of factors and everything else. So um, whatever is there is what we getting. And most yeah. of the time, because of how I travel in groups yeah. is hitting, and, hit and roll. Mm. You got roll, you got snap and roll, snap and roll, snap and roll, snap yeah. and roll. Um, groups are not kind. <laughs> to stuff like that. Yeah. So like, you know, and I'm pointing over here because I'm pointing to a long exposure photo from Montana and um, my homeboy who I wound up meeting at the head of this trail named Isaac, he convinced me to walk a mile off the trail. So what you're seeing is a mile off the trail and he sat there with the 45 minutes that yeah. it took me to take this photo. Nobody has ever sat there with me for 45 minutes to take a photo. They're like, Dad, are you ready yet? Yeah. He sat there with me, helped me with my tripod wow. and everything else. So the namesake, of the biggest image in the gallery is the Isaac to my, as an homage to my friend Isaac, mm. who's from Claimant Falls, Washington State, wow. um, who helped, who really, really, really helped me get that image. Yeah. Had the patience to sit there with me and all those other kinds of things. So, you know, um, group travel introduced me to the world. Yeah. The world allowed me a softer palette, mm. you know, um, while with the ability to kind of absorb people. Yeah. Now I'm able to absorb people, give it to other people through this idea of Ubuntu that I can kind of see you through myself. So, yeah. you know, we breaking everything down to sunny dispositions. You know, it's all, it's all good. Yeah. You know, we're not, we're not thriving in the idea of trauma. Trauma exists for everybody on some level. Yeah. Not that your trauma is, is, shouldn't, isn't significant. Right. Well, what you doing? Mm. It's one life. Right. And within that one life, you you don't have time. There ain't no time. Yeah. There's no such thing as time. Right. You know, like the time is now. The time is the t the time is always, always now. now. It's always yeah. now. There's no such time as later. Right. You can contemplate. You build all those kinds of things. Right. But if you want to do something, right now. Right. And what's right now? Most of the time, LLC. Right. <laughs> you know, you don't need nothing for it. LLC. <laughs> just go get it. Right. You know, just go get it. You know, like it ain't about trademarks and fame yeah. and this is this, that and the third. You no. Know, um oftentimes as entrepreneurs we set our barometer to the idea to 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 the to the standard of popularity on an algorithm mm. in in or in an algorithm mm. as opposed to actual 
actual stable financial freedom. Mm. And oftentimes, and I know this from my corporate experience, the people who got it don't flaunt it and the people who flaunt it don't ain't got it. Mm. They ain't got it like that. Right. And some people got paper and some people got long paper. <laughs> some people, some people got that. They got, they got that long. And, you know, and I, and I do aspire to that. You know, right, I, right, I, do, right, I, right. I definitely do aspire to that. But the goal here, the mission here isn't money. Right. The mission here is exposure. Mm-hmm. The mission here is conversation. While at the same time, I think I built a really good business model. Yeah. To be able to acquire income. So just two two things I'm not sure if we touch on. Um, one, what's what's the meaning of Ubuntu and why did you pick that name? Ubuntu is a South African philosophy um, that basically boils down to I am because you are. Um, I like to take it a little bit further and say, based on definition, is the universal bond of sharing that connects all humanity. So we all have a universal bond. The people that are going to consume this podcast, yeah. you're sharing it. With. Yeah. They're consuming it. Bond it. Mm. Reach humanity. Mm. Right. So every book that you read, um, there's no such thing as self taught. Yeah. You acquire skills. So mm. YouTube University doesn't mean self taught. YouTube right. University means somebody went through the time to right. produce some content for you to absorb. 100%. Right? Yeah. So there's some knowledge that was had by somebody else before you got it. transferred. Yeah. So you're not self-taught, but you are self-researched. Mm. Like you're self-studied. Yeah. You went and asked these questions, right? Yeah. And go to university to ask them, but right. you formulate them amongst yourself. Mm. Um, so how'd I get there? I've been to South Africa three times. That's the place uh, internationally that I am domestically, um, outside of Philadelphia, New Jersey, things like that, up in Long Beach, state that I've been to the most. So I've been there three times and it's palpable within the people. Yeah. It's, it's, it's who they are, it's yeah. how they are. So in America is, man, I'm fucking crackers mm. in South Africa. Well, just, that's just like, mm. this is, this is a different kind of energy around yeah. it. Mm. Um, even though, what they've struggled through and endured is more heinous right. because it's more recent. Right. Like the apartheid ended in the nineties. Yeah. So they're and still we're, fresh. We're man. all born. We were all born <laughs> in the nineties. So yeah. and they they were still under heavy uh, um, um, uh, Africanese apartheid. Yeah. In our lifetimes, mm. it's not it's not something that's in a distant past. Yeah. It's not colonialism from the seventeen hundreds. Right. It's in the nineteen nineties. Right. And for them to welcome me as brother, yeah, but also say it's just them right. when we hear pay give so much credence right. to this idea of whiteness that whiteness drives how we view ourselves, right? Right? It was so stark that I want that, right? Like, like I want, like, I want to feel like, that, like, you, like I want to feel that. And then, yeah. and once you, once you, how do you say, like, uh, uh. You can't put the cat back in the bag. So once I once I felt it, it ain't no going back. Right. You can't and, unfeel it. Right. Uh, every time, you know, most most of my trips and stuff like that is, damn, I don't want to lose this feeling. I do want to go home, but as soon as I get home, America washes that shit right off and through customs. <laughs> it's wow. weird. Like through customs, that shit gets wrenched <laughs> off. And, like you no, you no longer have that good feeling that you just had with all oh, this man. jaw off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you no longer have it as soon as you. And it's man. and it's and I don't want to say it disparage. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's just a it is. It's yeah. just, and I would I would imagine that anybody who travels frequently yeah. feels the same exact thing. You go to these places and then you come to America. You make all the money. You happy. You do the things. This is that and there. But at the same time, the freedom. Yeah. The, the 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 familialness the mm. that kind of thing is gone mm. it don't exist here so yeah. um on some level the gallery ubuntu right. is my way of bringing that tangible thing to my very own community uh, so wow oh, that's a part of it. intentional yeah intentional intentional and the second thing is is there any so let, let's say like pictures is is you capture moments mm. and sometimes those moments uh if you miss it you can't always capture it again is there any time that you feel like oh you missed a good shot or a good opportunity or a moment in time that should be framed and how do you deal with that if you can't 
Yeah. All the time. Okay. And you you every second can't be captured. It's impossible. It doesn't it doesn't it doesn't work that way. What yeah. I have is great. Mm -hmm. What I don't have, I don't miss. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. I only work with us on my hard drive. I mm -hmm. don't remember what I didn't get. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. like it, not even at all. Yeah. But I do be like, damn, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, but it's 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 fleeting. It's in the moment. It's like, damn. Yeah, that's some, some I, wisdom in if that. If I would have um, like, yeah. if I would have sat there a little longer, then I would have been able. If I would have been more a little bit more aware, or whatever yeah. the case may be. But at the end of it all, what I got is what I got. Right. You know. Right. I mean, I'm very satisfied yeah. with, with most of the time with the things that I wound up acquiring. How did the uh, or rather, when did the idea for the gallery come about? Uh, was it were you uh, were you aware that you wanted to uh, build this while you're taking some of these pictures? Or where, where along the journey did you say I want to open up this fine arts gallery in in Germantown? Um, yeah, I know you said it was around 2019. Mm -hmm. it's, when, it's, it's when I it's, it's when I um acquired or yeah inquired okay. for for the lease. Okay. Um. So I, I submitted my application to, yeah. to to get the space in twenty in twenty nineteen. They told me that that I was awarded with it in twenty nineteen. Yeah. Um. I, I, it's it's rudimentary phase started in twenty seventeen okay. when I was at the conference because yeah. I was able to see it. Yeah. Like somebody else who has their own gallery is theirs, mm -hmm. is all of their work. Yeah. Um, it functions as like it's it was it was oh my goodness, man. If I can if I if I could kind of like I can't explain how I felt going in there and like you know the Looney Tune characters where they we draw drop to the floor, <laughs> you know, the car you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's how it was for me. I'm like, what in the you know, because like I think I'm badass. I'm I'm right. I'm three years, I'm four, three to four years into photography. I'm rocking with my Sony's. I got a, I got an AR now. Right. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm moving. I'm, I'm, people call me Spider-Man. I'm shooting weddings good. I'm, mm. I'm the man right now on some level. And then I walk into this whole other world and I'm like, how does this work? Yeah. How does this work? But I also know that on some level, my demographic is don't know this exists. Mm. We don't know this exists. Like, right. because if we knew it exists, we'd be doing it. Right. You know, it's like, it's not like it's exclusive to him. Yeah. This is a way of doing something. Right. That we not doing. Right. When I absorbed him, there was, he already had galleries in Soho mm. in New York. Yeah. So that's a drive away. Yeah. So you can go get it. Yeah. But it doesn't exist for real, for real. Yeah. So if I say, who's Peter Lick? Everybody like, me like, I don't know. <laughs> Who's that? You know, well, why are you telling me about him? Yeah. Because as a photographer, he's probably the most famous based on how he sold his work. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? So when I talk to my NFL homies, they know who he is. Yeah. When I talk to my corporate folks, they don't have no idea. Mm. Now we're talking about paper and long paper. <laughs> you know, paper yeah. that paper that affords you a nice house or paper yeah. that affords you nice investments. Right. There's a there's a, a difference between those things, and right. you know, those things know certain things. So yeah. um, I had no idea who he was, what this works, how this works, what yeah. this means, what this is acrylic, what is, what mm. are these things? So um, it kind of started in 2017, and then it kind of morphed and built. Because ideally, this was really going to be uh, an, like an event space, yeah, that housed some of my work. Mm. But I was going to allow other people to do other things and I would take my work off the walls. But yeah. Then, then after a while, I was like, no, we're not, we're not doing that at all. Yeah. The business model doesn't work as good that way. Mm -hmm. It's not as unique that way. I won't say it doesn't because business models, event spaces work fat, fantastic, right. but that's not, it's not as unique that way. Mm -hmm. It's not the first that way. Right. This is the first, first. of its kind. That yeah. operates in a certain kind of way. All of our pieces are for sale. Yeah. They're limited edition, either one yeah. of sixty or one of elevens. They come complete with holographic security stickers, yeah. certificates of, authentic of authenticity, and nice thank you letters to te to tell you how to care for it. Mm. You know, with archival gloves, so that when you're touching your work, you're not getting the oils from your hands on you. Yeah. You know, so our our um our presentation. How we, how we package and sell you your investment. Yeah. Because we like to think of ourselves as a space to create, that creates new collectors. Mm. 
Um, and the collection in art as artifacts is a tried and trusted, time tested vehicle of investment. Yeah. Is what it is. Mm. Every bank, financial institution, corporate entity or whatever has portfolios in art. Mm. In some vault, some uh, temperature controlled storage yeah. unit to make sure that you be raised and the temperature doesn't degrade the paper that is printed on. Yeah. You know, if that's the case, why, why, why aren't mine? Mm. They are. So, you know, yeah. they, they absolutely right. are. Yeah. So if you build it to that, meaning, we're not functioning solely off selling images. We do a lot of things. I right. still shoot, you know, yeah. I do a headshot, I'll do a wedding here and there, right. you know, whatever the case may be. But at the same time, we are building the body of work yes. that will ideally, hopefully carry us into the future as people recognize the name of Steve, Stephen C.W. Taylor. And they're yeah. like, yo, you ain't got no Stephen C.W. Taylor in your career, dog. Right. Right. Similar to the, with, to the Basquiat, right. to Picasso, right. or something like that. So, you know, a napkin of Picasso is for a gazillion dollars. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of people doodle on napkins. Yeah. I yeah. want to be the Picasso right. of the doodle on napkins. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you're equating it, you know, I want a 60s and our presentation and the fact that you can actually have one of 60 amongst billions. Right. It's very rare. Right. It's very limited. Um, if you watch Antiques Roadshow. Yeah then your lineage, your great, great grandkids will go on Antiques Roadshow with this accompanying paperwork, mm. no different than a Rolex. Mm. Accompanying paperwork to say that this is worth whatever it is, mm. yeah. extra amount of dollars. Not because I'm famous, only now because it's an artifact right. that withstood the test of time mm. in pristine condition. Yeah. Baseball card that's 150 years old, don't matter who it is. Right. If it's in pristine condition, it's a pristine condition. Yeah. It's an artifact. Yeah. So when we think about things that way, yeah. at least for me as a business model, right. that can be capitalized on, mm -hmm. you know, as long as I can uh, subsidize and facilitate things a certain kind of way, we just need to bear it. Mm. I feel that. I feel that. Now, thanks for breaking that down and for, for going into the business model around, around what you're doing, too. Because uh, you mentioned that this was going to start, the idea originally was, this is going to be an event space. Mm -hmm. what, did it kind of occur to you or, or how, how, when did you make that shift to, you know what? No, no, we ain't doing that. Yeah, it, was, yeah. And it's fine. I mean, yeah. it didn't make no sense. Right. <laughs> it would, yeah. Point blank. It, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You have the most unique thing in the world and you're going to, What's the, what's the, what's the right diminish it mm. by calling it that? Right. What? Right. So now this, now within business, yeah. there's an evolutionary process, right? Yeah. So you start with one idea. Right. Where you end yeah. up yeah. isn't where you began. Right. Even if the fund foundation is, is the exact same. Right. Right. So that's, that's name, that's marketing, that's branding, right. that's your logo, that's all of these things that you work, that you work through too. Right. Right. So. Um, that's just a part of me working through too. Yeah. I I didn't open it yet. I hadn't had it yet. It's still right. on paper. It's conceptual. Mm. But I also am now talking about it for two years. Right. So the way I'm talking about it, I'm not talking about it as event space. Right. I'm talking about it as this is my photography gallery. Mm -hmm. I am opening a photography gallery in the, in, in the, in the vein of this person. Right. Right. Well, I don't know who that person is. Well, you should know who that person is. Mm -hmm. Look them up, Google them, or whatever the case may be. Now that we're into the space, yeah. you know, and seven months later of being in business, when people step in, oh, yeah. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see it. You know, so I've been, you know, I've been talking about this vision for a long time. And sometimes as an entrepreneur, it's really, really hard when yeah. you got this thing in your head. Yeah. That as clear as day, as vibrant as all outdoors, yeah. that I'm trying to confer to you or express to you, and you don't have an ounce of what the fuck mm. I'm talking about. <laughs> no context to build back to what I'm talking yeah. about, right? And I know what I'm talking about is right. I'm so passionate about it, but you just don't have context to it. Mm. It's not, it's not, it has zero to do with you. Right. And 
everything to do with the fact that man, we need to open this on that one thing because still nobody knows what it is. Right. You know, so you know, within business there are always areas that aren't tapped. Right. So I I look for the pools that ain't no fishing. Mm. And I'm swimming in photography is not a medium that is exclusive. Yeah. Everybody got a anybody who has a phone is a photographer. Right. You know, mm. there's there's billboards with iPhone pictures on. Mm. My you know these smaller than billboards, so that means that anybody who has an iPhone theoretically can have a gallery just like this, all of iPhone, mm. all of iPhone pictures, if they wanted to do it, saw it that way. However, right. the case may be. Um, so if it's not exclusive, yeah, to me, then my doing it. It's special, but at the same time, it shouldn't, it, it ain't, it's, mm. it's just a business. It's right. just, it's a type of business. Mm. And because no thought is original, I'm not the first one who thought of this, mm. but I did have the very intentional purpose of putting this where I'm from. Right. Most galleries of this scale do not function in neighborhoods with median income levels like this. Mm. In Philadelphia, those are all on the parkway. Yeah. Rittenhouse Square, Old City. Yeah. You know, North Philly, West Philly, depending on who, where it is. But from a high end standpoint, yeah, they don't, they, you wouldn't put m most of those people who own those spaces aren't going to put those spaces in places that they don't live. Right. right? You know, right. so, um, I think that's what resonates for, for, I imagine a lot of people that, that come here because, uh, it's the, it's, it's a different feeling coming, uh, into this space. Here then, and I said going somewhere in Rittenhouse or, or Santa City or one of the other places, like, um, like, like, th there's definitely like a measure of population of people, and I, I'd be including that who, who like who want to come here. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'll say this: of the 39 pieces that we sold, yeah, we've only had to ship two. Mm. Wow. So the community has supported us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, and I'll, I still don't know how to take this, you know, and hopefully I'll get better at it, but thank you for doing this. We needed this. Uh, that's hard. Mm. Uh, uh, we, I, I, I did it for we, but I did it. I didn't do it yeah. for we. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it was very intentional because we told me that this didn't exist. Mm. We, we didn't know. Yeah. We was like, why aren't you putting that in Rittenhouse Square? Mm. So we told me. So when we says we need it and thank you, I'm, I'm extremely humbled to the fact that like, damn, you know, the business model is going to make money, but that's not the business model. Yeah. The business model is to create conversation around images that yeah. spread the pedagogy of Ubuntu. Mm. Legit. Yeah. It's much harder for you to shoot me if you see me as you. Mm. And that's it. So we work with youth, youth organizations, yeah. um, uh, nonprofits um, that work with at-risk at youth. Yeah. Um, and we go through this exercise when we come to the gallery is, all right, well, uh, if, without any impediment, yeah. you, can, you can do, think of, fathom anything in the world. What would it be? Mm. What would that be? What, what, what can your mind uh, uh Conjure up yeah. in the space of I'm going to do this. Mm. All right. Now take your favorite piece and put that into the context of how you can do it. Yeah. Wow. So that this is going into like the, the, the mission beyond just the, the fact that you have a gallery here, but like the kind of impact that this is sure. having on, sure. on this media community. Yeah. And in simple terms, is we want to be able to provide a space that people can enter and ask themselves new questions. Yeah. You know, like we said before, Google is only as good as the question that you ask it. So if you can ask yourself new questions, formulate those questions in a yeah. certain kind of way, don't have, it doesn't have to have anything to do with the art. Right. Most of the people that come in here, we don't sell anything to. Mm. The gallery is free to the public Friday through Sunday, 12 to 6. Mm. You know, so anybody can come. It's, it's, right. it, it, the Philadelphia Museum of Art charges, every place else charges. Yeah. There, 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 
there aren't a whole bunch of public spaces that you can go to and then and consume, assume yeah. art at the highest level. Yeah. Right. We want to be a, a place that you can do that because it helps me create conversation. Right. So everybody who comes in winds up becoming a friend of the galleries. Yeah. Uh, we wind up talking, yeah. we do podcasts right, with right. each other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, all of those things, you know, simply because I provide this space that's welcoming, yeah. warm, and that facilitates a crap ton of questions. Right. You know, and I got all of the, the answers for you. <laughs> you know, I can answer every single question however you want to. So um, our biggest problem now is, you know, you know, now we need to try to find uh, people who could work the gallery, but right. people come to see me, mm. you know? So how do I remove myself from a space that people actually come to see me? Yeah. Yeah. People will come and see the work, but right, right, right. they want to come talk to Steve, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? So, um, so, and uh, we appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, we really appreciate that. The community has definitely supported us yeah. and uh, has a, has had our back. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely had our back. So it's cool. we, we cool. definitely appreciate it. Including you, you know, I met right. you, seen you, yeah. you know, even though it was at Mosaic. Right. Really, you know, it, was, it, was, it was at Uncle Bobby's, Bobby's you right. know, for right. different times. Right, right. right. No, for sure, man, for sure. And, and I mean, again, I, I was blown away that, that, that this was here. And I remember that, you know, the first day I walked past, I, I was, I was at Uncle Bobby's that day and I walked past and I said, what, 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 what's going on? What's going on here? And mm -hmm. then, you know, that's right. how, that's how, how all that kind of happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think when you came in, I was talking to some, I was, I was, I was engaged. Yeah, with, yeah, in, convers in conversation, yeah, 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 yeah. conversation with somebody so, else. So, like, you know, the gallery really facilitates conversation. So, yeah. you know, um, powerful, powerful, powerful. It, it, you know, one day early on, it was like nine black men in here, mm. and they all came in independently. Like, think about that. In the space of art, mm. there's nine black dudes. Yeah. Dudes, not women. <laughs> dudes. <laughs> That come in independently, that wind up conversating yeah. with each other on some level. Yeah. You know what I mean? By the by the end of their stay. Right. You know, some people stay a little longer than others, but mm. all men, all black. Yeah. Wow. Consuming my work. Wow. Looking at it and saying, I was like, damn, yeah, that's all that's that. Yeah. 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 That's I yeah. have never been in this space mm. that functions like that. Mm. Outside of an event, it's yeah. like public hours. Right. You know, like mm -hmm. it's not a curated event. That, yeah. So, um, you know, we, we've okay. been uh, very, very, very fortunate. Um, just a, it's a beautiful, pristine space. Yeah. Uh, the images are cool. Like, you know, all this stuff. Uh, there was no, no stone unturned. Yeah. Left unturned. Like we, we tried to um, address everything that we thought that could possibly arise. Mm. By, being a gallery owner, and I still don't know what a gallery owner is. <laughs> you know, I'm still working through that. Man, but, but you know, I, I want to say thank you for for opening this up and, and for being that agent for change you know, mm -hmm. here because uh, you know it's, it's I know impacting a lot of a lot of people's lives, and um, you know, so it's it's been an honor thus far to have this conversation um, yeah. and, and to be able to share this with, with our audience. So. Mm -hmm. I thank you for having me. Um, I, I appreciate you guys for, uh, for the for work that you do. You know, like, um, again, um, we are archivists. Yeah. This whole process is, yeah. is, 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 a, is, a, is an exercise and saving for later. Right? Yeah. Not like, oh, candy now and laters. Like this is from, this is now for later. Mm. Um, and as we keep doing that and understand our charts, then the stories of blackness yeah. It won't need interpretation. Mm. It won't need to be uh, um, approved yeah. by a larger body. Mm. We're we're telling what those stories exactly are right. in the moments that they're happening. Mm. They don't they don't need no room for translation. Our stories are not trauma stories. Right. Our stories are not poverty stories. Mm. Our stories are just stories mm. of magical motherfuckers mm. doing magical shit. And so, you know, I appreciate you guys. And uh, uh, one jaw off. I like it all. Yeah, I mean, I mean we it's, like it all. <laughs> it's uh, I mean, that that alignment with this idea of Ubuntu mm -hmm. and one jaw off. You know, that's that's very. And I'll leave you on this. So when I when I often talk about the term Ubuntu. Yeah. I often talk about it in in the sense of 
I know it as Ubuntu. Right. You know it as Buddhism. Mm. You know it as Christianity. You know it as yeah. Islam. Yeah. You know it as something else. Yeah. I know it as Ubuntu. But mm. these penance are prevalent in most all major religions yeah. and most all places. If you read the book, The Four Agreements, yeah. you know, all these things that talk about the self of your neighbor as, 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 as the, as the entity for yeah. change by seeing self mm. in all other human living things. Yeah. That's why people be vegans and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. you know, so, um, you know, again, one jaw off. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for having me. You know, I, we got one more. We got one more question for you. Okay, sweet. sweet. Um, so this is a question we like to ask our guests. You know, as, as, we, as we get to the tail end of our show, is uh, if you had to talk to your younger self um, before you started the gallery, let's take uh, let's take Stephen Taylor right before you picked up the camera, and knowing now the the trail you go on, the ups and downs. All the places you would visit, and then you know, eventually opening up this this gallery and, and kind of continuing on with your mission and, and purpose. What advice would you have for for that younger Stephen Taylor, knowing where you kind of be going uh, moving forward? I mean, I guess the the the, the easy thing is to say I want to change nothing, yeah. um, but no, I, I probably would change a, a crap ton of stuff. Uh, Anxiety around the idea that it's going to work. Mm. Over like if you got a plan in motion, you, you, you did the due diligence, it's going to work. Yeah. It's, it's like you don't have to worry about that. It's mm. not much stress around it. You know, running a business is hard. Being an entrepreneur is hard. Yeah. You know, it's different from nine to five, a certain kind of way, but, um, trust yourself. Like you did it. Yeah. You stepped out on it. Yeah. Rock, rock, mm. rock with it. You yeah. know, like you said you was going to do it. Do it. You mm. know? One of the most sage pieces of advice, and I'll credit my homeboy Omar for this when I was, um, which, which made me pick up a camera. Yeah. He said, you're talking all this bullshit, but you ain't doing nothing. Mm. You bitching to me, but you ain't doing nothing. Mm. The next day I went and bought a book. Yeah. The yeah. next day. That, that don't light the fire. <laughs> the next day. And I was like, dog, you, you know, so, but there, there takes a level of, of humility too. Yeah. So I didn't right. snap back at him. I was like, right. you're right. Like right. you absolutely, you absolutely right. right. Bro. Like I'm, I'm, I'm talking all this nonsense, I'm, but I'm not doing anything. Mm. You're right. Yeah. You know? So it, oftentimes if, if our friends or people we care for say you, you bitching, yeah. you're going to be like, no, I ain't bitching. <laughs> And it was, it was none of that. It yeah. was like, you know, you're right. Like I, I need to, then the very next day I went to Best Buy and bought two cameras. Yeah. And the rest is history. Mm. You know, so I can't tell him and I won't say his name because <laughs> me and him go through it all the time. Yeah. I'm not giving you credit for anything, man, but he's the one who right. I had to accredit to my, my start with the idea that like, I, I gotta do it. Yeah. You, you got, you just gotta do it. Yeah. You can plan. Until you blew in the face. Mm. You just gotta, just gotta, gotta do it. Yeah. <laughs> you got, you got, you just, you just gotta do it. And that's yeah. the, that's the difference between somebody having something and somebody dreaming about something. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, so we got in there before we pull the close out. I think we do. Well, this has been a hell of an episode of Pepper Soup Talk. We're here with Steven Taylor. I like the way you guys say Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we, uh, we owe you a bowl of pepper soup for so sure. for so sure. um we owe us to that too and so 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 not too spicy not too spicy <laughs> not too spicy <laughs> not, too, not too spicy i've had jollof rice Man. before a couple of different ways and some people like it i see yeah i mean pepper soup pepper soup that's it doesn't really get any spicier spicier than dinner. <laughs> that's super, that's there yeah, that's pepper 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 yeah, in, yeah. the whole thing i'll do it though you take a couple a couple of it probably tastes good sips Oh yeah, no, it's good though. It's good though. You make it? Who makes it? I mean, well, we can, uh, yeah. I've, I've I've made it. I've made it in the past, but we, we can both we can both make pepper soup though. We can both make pepper soup. Are you guys you yeah. guys you guys culinary? You got culinary skills too? Uh, but well, Tope, to be honest, Toby's more of the foodie. He's 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 a foodie. Like I cook sometimes, but he's. <laughs> we gotta get you in here for 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 a presentation around this food, man. So I remember there was uh this is this side note. 
there was one time, um, I, you know, I pulled up to Toby's place and I see him glued to the screen. What, what were we watching that day? Um, I thought it was like Master's Chef. Master Chef? Master, oh, it was Master Chef? Master Chef. Yeah. And he was, he was glued to the screen. I said, oh, this, this guy's a fool. <laughs> Chef Toby. A fanatic. Yeah, Chef Toby. So, um, uh, again, thank you, um, uh, Juan Jarloff and uh, Pepper, Pepper Soup Talk for, for, sure. for having Ubuntu and myself on, on, on the show. Before, before we head out, I got to ask you this. Uh, what is your favorite Jarloff rice? What, con- what country yeah. so makes the, the best Jollof rice? Well, I only know Jollof from Nigeria. Okay. The word, like, okay. it, it is it attributed to Jollof rice from Nigeria. So in Kenya, they don't have Jollof. It will, it will be like, um, uh, uh, bag. what's the Swahili dish? God damn it. Um, I just ran right out of my mind because we get, we get it made all the time when I was there. So, I mean, Jalef yeah. is West West yeah, Africa. Yeah, that's that's, 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 that's West Africa. To be to be fair, uh, to be fair, because because Toby and I were both Nigerian, so we have we have you know. Oh, y'all got levels. Y'all got levels to the Jalef. <laughs> but uh, but I'm like I saying? only only know Jalef rice to be to to be Nigerian. So there's this one yeah. African food spot that I went to in Philadelphia, and they had Jalef rice. So I had Jalef rice with some chicken. Okay. With the Kilimanjaro. Where is that? That's uptown. That's up around this way somewhere. So it's uh it's in West Philly University City. It's one uh, on Forty Third Chestnut. Uh, or is it? Was it recent? There's a place called Sia I have no clue. This is made. This made. This yeah. was before the pandemic. So it's not been two three years okay. ago. Because Jol- so Jol- Jol- so Jolof originated from Senegal, but Nigerians definitely have like taken it over. So, uh, so we always have one people. People know it as uh, Nigerian. <laughs> yeah. When I think when I when I think Jollof, I think Nigerian. I, yeah. don't, I don't think anywhere else. I think West Africa, uh, but specifically Nigeria, yeah. that has this Jollof rice. Oh God damn! I wish Briani. 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 That's that's is what I'm thinking of. Okay. And that's that's will be the. I mean, it's not necessarily Jollof rice, but you know, similar to the sense that, like, you know, this Briani is is a is a is a, is a meat. Yeah, that has some rice with it. It's, mm. you know, cooked for a good long period of time. And, you know, and, and that's a quintessential Swahili dish. And we yeah. have like your chicken biryani, your lamb biryani, your shrimp biryani, right. your seafood right. biryani, or whatever the case may be. So when I was in Lamu, it's like you would have our biryani uh, made for us, but we would have to call in the morning and then by the evening, mm. by dinner time, it would be ready. Gotcha, right. gotcha. So, it's kind of interesting. A lot of Kenyan dishes, it kind of mirrors Indian dishes. Yes. Yeah? A lot of influence. Yes. A uh, 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 huge influence. Um, but I think it's the other way around. Right. I think it's Indians have a lot of Swahili influence. Mm-hmm. Um, based on how people migrate. And again, I'm not a historian or anything like that, but yeah. Uh, 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 I could, again, I could be wrong, but if things originate from Africa. Yeah. Swahili is one of the oldest cultures mm-hmm. in the world. Um, it was traversed. Yeah. Two other places. Mm-hmm. In my mind. And this, yeah. I could be very wrong. Somebody made to my, but you know, based on, uh, how, how I understand certain kinds yeah. of things, like, you know, in Dubai, you see yeah. arches. Those yeah. arches are Swahili. Mm-hmm. You know, how people move around, how yeah. cultures move around, how, how Islamic culture moves around. Mm. Most of the world is, just, most of that world is Islamic. Yeah. They take their building skills with them. They take right. their food with them. They right. take all of the things that they would have done in their space with them. Mm. It, if that's the case, and I know that's why Healy culture yeah. is older yeah. than influence comes from Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like in Durban, in South Africa, which is, which there is a heavy Indian right. influence and in population. Those people migrated to Africa. Yeah. Right. And, so, I, and I know there's a, there's a heavy, um, a, a big Indian population in quite a lot of different regions. In correct, Africa, correct, so. correct, 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 mm-hmm. correct, correct. So, um, with, with, with that idea, like, you know, I, I like to associate Africa with the place that things originated. Yeah. And then came out of. Right. So yes, that is uh 
uh, the Sayyidah Sheikh Jai Grand Mosque is in Abu Dhabi. It's Middle Eastern. Yeah. It was built by Middle Easterns. Mm. That culture is, is Islamic mm. from King. Mm. <laughs> you know, so yeah. um, I, I could be wrong, but it makes me feel good. Nah, man. Let's, let's, thank you. Thank you for thank you for all your, your knowledge and your wisdom, mm -hmm. and um, and for also just sharing with us the it's such such a breadth of like experiences that um, that you, that you draw from. And um, so now this is this has been this has been a pleasure. Thank you, thank you, much yeah. much appreciated. And uh, uh, again, we are located. This is Ubuntu Fine Art. We yeah. are located at 5423 Germantown Avenue. Yeah. In the historic Germantown section of Philadelphia. We cool. are open Friday through Sunday, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. And if people want to uh, check you on social media, where can they, uh, where can they Ubuntu find you? Fine Art, U B U N T U Fine Art on both Facebook and Instagram. And Stephen C W Taylor on Instagram. Stephen C W Taylor Photography on Facebook, if I'm not mistaken. Cool. Something along those lines. I don't do the Twitter and all the other stuff. <laughs> But this has been Pepper Soup Talk. We'll, we'll see you next time.